Good morning everybody, welcome back to TPG. We are going to do a little project today. As of this morning I've uh, noticed a couple of little problems that I have right here and one of them is a minor oil leak but it's something that everybody faces that has one of these cars. It's right down there going from the turbo to the oil pan. The uh, oil line that I ended up, the oil return line that I put on here after we did the uh, turbo upgrade. It was uh, a little worse for wear when I threw it on, but I did make a couple of gaskets and stick it on there and it worked fine for a few months here and I haven't had really any issues other than this new leak that started at the pan where the uh, oil drain meets the pan. So I know a lot of guys make these or buy the kits with the rubber hose, the uh, oil safe, high temp safe, 5 eighths lines and yada yada. You can get them if you want, but I've got some spare parts from the, the rip apart there when I tore off the old turbo I have this happy little guy sitting around still and I know that this is flange for the t25 and that this part is too small so you end up having to modify the end here so I don't know what we're gonna end up doing here today is using this beautiful aluminum part instead of the old metal part that's all rotted and rusted the 1g style one and i don't want to spend the money on the 1g style oil return or one of those rubber hose adapter sets i'm just going to work with what i got and i'll show you guys how you can use a nice aluminum 2g style oil return on a 1g turbo so the pan is actually flanged the same on this end uh, the only difference is the flange going from the turbo itself. So I'll show you what you got to do to make this thing fit correctly. There's some old gasket on here I got to take off and obviously this is the one that you'd want to use regardless because it's made out of aluminum. There's no rust on it. The, the heads obviously have a little bit of rust on them surface but I'm going to clean this all off with a wire wheel, get the gaskets all off. Go underneath, we're going to drain the oil because she's due for a change and while we're at it we're going to replace this, the oil filter, and get it all topped back off with some fresh new juice. So this should be a fun one, guys. Let's let's get after it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is clean off the rust and get these old gaskets off of both of these flange ends, make these things look nice and pretty again. Hopefully get a little bit of a shine back to them. If not a shine, we're just gonna get the rust off. And other than that, this is in great condition. There's a little tiny ding right here on the side of this neck, but it fits on there. I know the length is correct. I know that this end bends a little bit and we can move it around some and stretch it just a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to use my drill with this attachment right here and we're going to clean all this stuff off real fast. Okay guys, so after we uh, did a little bit of cleanup, we got this thing looking a hell of a lot better. Got the old gasket off of it, and the back side's cleaned off. The edges are nice. This side came out a lot better, the part that goes to the turbo. But if you look closely, you can see, maybe in the glare, there's still some imperfections. So this one's a little bit worse. I mean, the dimple, obviously, that's the uh, gasket surface that you can see there. But there's still a couple little bumps. So what I like to do is take a flat file and file this side flush and do the same with the top side. And that's going to help promote sealing. So I'm going to do that next. And then we're going to start draining some oil. So after hitting this with the file for about five minutes or so, we got this end nice and flat, flush. That's going to be a perfect sealing surface. And we did the same on the one that's going up to the turbo. And now we're ready to jack this car up in the air and start draining the oil out of it. Alright guys, so now that we've got this thing up in the air, we're going to take out our drain plug back here with a 7, or no, it's an 18 mil. And as you can see, I'll put a little light on that for you. That's pretty wet right there at the oil return where it meets the pan, and I've noticed some some drips coming off of it. So 
obviously she's got a leaking issue. So we're just gonna take out, oh, you can see a drip right there on the bottom of it right now, actually, look at that. Let's see a shot of that for you. Yeah, right there, you can see it. Well, anyway, what we're gonna do is drain our oil first, then we're gonna pull our filter off, then we're gonna come back over here once we get the plug put back in and the new filter installed, and we are going to take out the two 10 mils of the oil pan and then the two 10 mils up at the turbo right there. And we're gonna pull that oil return line out. And the reason I'm doing that second, obviously, is because it's full of oil, and we wanna compare the holes on this part of the, the flange up here at the turbo to the new one that we're gonna use from the 2G. Mind you, it is a MHI drain, a Mitsubishi drain, and the other one is a Garrett style drain. So I'll show you the differences in just a second. All right, gentlemen, we've got our new oil filter on, which is right down in there. Uh, we've got our plug put back in, all the oil's drained, but the pan is sitting underneath the turbo. So now we're gonna go up under there. We're gonna pull out the two tens and well, the two tens on the turbo on the oil drain and the two tens that are going into the oil pan and we're gonna get that return line completely off. And side note, if you guys don't own a pair of these uh, adjustable filter wrench pliers, then I don't know what's wrong with you. These things work fantastic. I've actually had a few different pairs of these so far, and this is the best working set. And of course, this little thing, the cover is breaking off, but these things are pretty awesome. They work really well so far. I'm just gonna have to rip this the rest of the way off. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to it. four 10 mils out that are holding this old drain line in, or return line. And as you can see, it's a little worse for wear. She's pretty rusty. And I don't know, that thing looks like it might even be able to pop itself right open right there. I bet you could pinch it and it would disintegrate. But uh, yeah, this is my homemade gasket on the oil pan, or on the bottom of the turbo rather. And here's the oil pan side. Uh, make sure your gaskets get scraped off of the bottom of the turbo and the oil pan itself. You're going to want to take your wire wheel and clean those areas off, making sure not to get any of the uh, wire bristles in anywhere in the oil pan. But yeah, this is it. So I'll show you the differences real fast. All right, so here is the old, here is the new. They are similar in pretty much every aspect except for the sizes of the holes where the bolts line up. Now. If you look here, you can't really see it very well, but if you line up the bottom hole and the top hole, well, obviously only one lines up. So we're going to, let me show you this way. If I stack them on top of one another, get this old gasket out of here first. All right, so if I stack them on top of one another, I think you can get the idea if you look through, the holes are a little bit off. So we can't get this new one to bolt up until we move the holes inward just a little bit. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. So what you gotta do is you gotta move these holes inward. So I've seen people take and notch the entire outside of this out and then go inwards just a little bit. I'm not gonna do that. I'll show you guys how to do it with a, a drill, and I'll tell you the sizes and all that fun in just a hot second, so let's get after that. Okay guys, so here's to give you a, a better understanding of what our issue is here. Um, let me show you with a caliper. So, this bad boy turned on, and zeroed, all right. Well, the bottom hole to the bottom hole the inside edge there. And if you look, we are approximately 1.24 inches. So let's go over, there we go. From hole to hole we are 31.68 millimeters. And on this side, we are 36 point two four thirty six millimeters. So what we have to do is make this opening fit 31.7 and well, right around there. You see what I'm saying. 
millimeters. So we gotta open this one up in the middle here, take out that little extra meat from that hole down and from this hole up. So we're gonna make a couple of marks on this thing. And there's a, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, honestly. Uh, you can do it with a drill press, which would be really accurate. You'd be able to open it up, get it all taken care of without having any issue. You can do it with a step bit. You can do it with a regular drill bit. Or you can just go Rambo style and rip it apart with a grinder. Any way like that will work. You just want to have a little bit of meat left on the bones here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to measure these off real fast. And then I'm going to take either, I think I'm going to use my step bit. I'm going to start a little pilot hole here, and then I'm going to use my step drill bit to open this up just a little bit more to shave off the additional uh, meat that I need. Seems as the difference is only, what was it, a couple millimeters. So we're going to measure this out real fast. I'm going to mark it, and then I'm going to hit it with a step, and I will tell you what size I use to get it finished. Right, there she be guys after punching her out to 7 16 on this end they're obviously bigger than the uh, heads to the bolts so let me show you real quick all right so the head of the bolt will fall through so for this part you're gonna want to use a couple of flat washers because that fits through the hole so I just grabbed a couple of different size flat washers and I'm going to take the uh, washer off the bolt that came with it. I'm going to use those to connect the uh, drain line to the turbo and now I got to go make a couple of gaskets. So I'm going to do that real fast and I'll show you guys how to put it back together. Okay, so here's where we stand. I took a little bit of a black Sharpie and covered both of these ends here and then stamped it onto a cereal box and made two gaskets out of the cereal box but that's neither here nor there we're not going to tell anybody about the cereal box gaskets and then uh, covered them with a light coating of RTV black and we're going to let that dry for a few more minutes now I got to go up underneath here and start cleaning the old gaskets off the bottom of the turbo and off of the oil pan so we're putting her back together all right so we got this thing cleaned off we got all the new parts put back on here there is the new oil return line and let me zoom in on it I got a new gasket back in there got it all nice and cleaned off torque the bolts down and I don't know if you can see it or not but let's take a look uh, yeah there's the uh, oil return crank that down nice and tight uh, that thing's sitting there pretty now we're gonna fill this puppy back up with some oil and we should be all right all right so now we're filling it back up with some oil and we're going to check for leaks and one other thing is i wanted to mention that i did end up going to 7 16 with a step drill bit to open up the part of the drain line that connects to the turbo from the bottom and that fit perfectly it brought us all the way out to i believe it was 31.10 millimeters and i'm pretty sure that's what it was but uh yeah, it fit perfectly. The bolts went in fine. So, 7 16 that'll do it. But back to filling up the uh, oil real fast. Okay, we got it all filled back up with oil. I like to put just a touch extra in because we have a fresh oil filter and there's no oil in the turbo now. So, one thing I like to do before I start this thing up is I have an inline fuse for my fuel pump. So, I pull that and crank it a few times to get the oil pumping through. If not, you can pull your uh, fuel... Uh, fuse right out of here and crank it a couple of times. I usually do it for about five, ten seconds, just enough to build up some oil pressure. And uh, once you see it register on the gauge inside on the dashboard, or if you have an aftermarket gauge, usually you're all right. So I'm going to do that real fast, double check for leaks, and then I'm going to fire this puppy up. All right, guys, we got it fired up to get nice and warm. Obviously, check your oil level one more time after it gets fully warmed up, up to operating temp. Uh, everything looks great on this one now. There's no more drips, no more leak coming from the oil pan. So that's it right there, guys. That's how you take your 
T25 Garrett oil drain line and turn it into a MHI Mitsubishi 16G oil drain line. And uh, yeah, it's not, it's not the most difficult task in the world, but still, it's a hell of a lot better than the 1Gs if you're using a used one, because uh, up here in the Rust Belt, any kind of steel or metal gets just destroyed. It gets rusty and just falls to pieces. So anyway, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content just like this. We're going to be having a hell of a time learning DSM link here in the future. And uh, yeah, it's been fun, guys. Make sure to wash them hands. We'll see you next time right here at Today's Project Guide. Take care.